minutes remain until the Denny's PBA Tour takes its mid-season break. So far, this year has been a showcase of old-school domination. The legends have conquered the lanes en route to titles and trophies, while most of the young guns have fallen by the wayside. However, just last week in Chicago, Wes Malott stood tall, taking home his second career at Denny's PBA Tour title. Have the young guns come out to play, or will the legends have the last laugh? We find out next. From just outside Cleveland, it's the Ace Hardware Championship, live on ESPN. We're coming to you from Freeway Lanes of Wycliffe, Ohio, near Cleveland, as ESPN proudly presents live coverage of the Denny's PBA Tour. Today, the young guns take on the legends, two youngsters and two veterans. Now, all four bowlers are ready to roll. Last week's Discover Card Windy City Classic Champion looks to win back-to-back -back titles today for the first time in his career from Argyle, Texas, Big Wes Malott. This four-time titleist is looking to break a 61 events winless streak. Today he makes his second TV appearance of the season from Horseheads, New York, Ryan Schaefer. The Elmira Express is back on TV. Ryan Schaefer bowls under the bright lights for the 40th time in his career. He has plenty of television experience. Now he needs some wins to one day earn legendary status. He's the reigning PBA Player of the Year and leader of the Young Guns. Today he looks to knock off a legend and win his first PBA title of the season and ninth of his career. From Simpsonville, South Carolina, Tommy Jones. This young gun hit the bullseye four times last year, firing his way to Player of the Year honors. Now he sets his sights on his first title of the season. To get there, he has to take down a legend. He's the tour's all-time titleist leader after winning the season opening International Japan Cup. Today he looks to extend the record with his 34 career title. From Ocala, Florida, Walter Ray Williams Jr. He's the Babe Ruth of bowling, the all-time tour title leader. Two years ago, Walter Ray Williams Jr. hit a home run here in Cleveland, winning for the 40th time. He looks to go deep again in Ohio today. These are your finalists competing for the title in the 2006 Ace Hardware Championship. Lane's work. We're back in Wycliffe, Ohio for a second time in three years. Here are the brackets for our matchups today. We get right into it with a great match. Tommy Jones takes on Walter A. Williams Jr. Then it's Wes Malott and Ryan Schaefer. The winners will bowl for a championship. Hello and welcome to suburban Cleveland. Glad you could join us today. Dave Ryan with you. We have the setting we've wanted here. Legends versus the Young Guns. Young Guns like Tommy Jones, who has won eight career titles, the reigning player of the year, and Wes Malott. Already he's made four Danny's PBA Tour TV shows this year. That's best on the tour. Against the likes of the legends of Walter A. Williams Jr., who made incredible history last year, just in September, as he won the Japan Cup and made history, surpassing Earl Anthony's all-time tour title record. For more on that, let's go lane level now. Randy Peterson and Norm Duke standing by. And Dave, a truly historic event that took place a couple of months ago in Tokyo, Japan, some 6,000 miles from home, as Walter Ray finally eclipsed Earl Anthony's record of 41 career titles. And Norm, you and I were both there witnessing history. You know, the Japan Cup is always a marquee event, but this season, Walter Ray Williams really took that to a whole new level. He sure did. 
And it looked as though for a while that Walter Ray may not get that shot because in the semifinal match against Ryan Schaefer, Ryan Schaefer had him on the ropes, and that match came down to the 10th frame. Yes, Ryan Schaefer needed a strike in the 10th to advance, leaves the big, ugly spit, split, lets Walter Ray advance to the title match against Pete Weber. Then he starts striking on a condition where 200 was hard to eclipse, Randy. Strike he did. In fact, he threw 10 consecutive strikes before a solid seven pin denied him of 300. The record is now Walter Ray's. The big 289 game. But today, in order for Walter Ray to get to title number 43, Norm, he's got a big obstacle in his way, and that obstacle is reigning player of the year, Tommy Jones. And in this event, I crossed with Tommy Jones. And at some point in each round, the outside part of the lane would dry up, allowing Tommy Jones to make a big step to the left and just fire it to the outside. And with all those revs, Randy, that ball came back toward the pins and just destroyed them. And he dominated in qualifying this week. Oh, huh. Last week, Wes Malat with a huge victory in Chicago, winning the Discover Card Windy City Classic, his second career Denny's PBA Tour title. What an emotional week it was for him. His son Jordan been sick through Thanksgiving. Oil pattern today, it's Viper. We're 37 feet. We've had four perfect games, and this is interesting because for the first time this year, we have overlay. It's a 20-foot guardian surface of Formica, just five millimeters thick over the first 20 feet of the lane should create some interesting ball reaction today. And what a matchup we have got. Walter Ray Williams Jr. against Tommy Jones. Walter Ray gets us started. Ten pin. And this week, Dave, lane conditions was all about friction. You talked about the surface. The difference between wood surface and a synthetic surface is friction. Wood is a much higher friction type of surface. You put the same oil pattern on wood that you do on synthetics, Norm. You got a lot more hook on wood than you do on synthetics. You do it. You have to guard from your ball rolling out, hitting the pins weak like Walter Ray's first shot did, leaving the flat ten. So Walter Ray's wife, Paige Pennington, by his side as usual here on TV. And now it's Tommy Jones. Waiting player of the year. We talked about that. Eight titles in the past two years. The best ever winning percentage. Denny's PBA Tour history on TV. He's 24 and 7 under the bright lights his young yet brilliant career from Simpsonville South Carolina seventh year on tour interesting ball reaction there not the start Tommy Jones wanted Norm no it does you always want to start with the strike and the first time you see your ball wiggle down lane and not make that big hook recovery back that's not a good sign it means you're gonna have to move your feet to the right or soften up both cases Tommy's a little confused second TV appearance of this season for Tommy Look out! Chops that pin and leaves the eight. So an open frame early for Tommy Jones. Ready? what happened? Well, I'll tell you what happened. He chopped the spare. Throws the ball nice and straight, and he just chops the four right off the eight. And that's the risky run, shooting that spare. Can Tommy rebound? That ball hurries into the pocket perfectly on our Viper oil pattern. Ten back for Tommy Jones. Leading us to the ace hardware matchup. It is the definition, Norm, of the young gun against the legend here. A Hall of Famer against perhaps a future Hall of Famer in Tommy Jones. Yeah, and you look at Walter Ray Williams' historic career. Look at it. 118 events, he only had two titles. Tommy Jones, same number of events, he has eight titles and a major. Wow, so much better start for Tommy. Here's Walter Ray, all 10 down to the pit for him. Late bloomer, Randy, was Walter Ray en route to Hall of Fame status. Yeah, and you look at those numbers, and I think they're, they're a bit deceiving. If you look at the longevity that Walter Ray has had, can a style like Tommy Jones last and be great for as many years as Walter Ray has been great? Will that style hold up, Norm? Possibly. If Tommy's strong enough, maybe it will. I would not be. Here's Walter Ray looks for the double. 
Not into the 1 3 pocket the way he'd want it, but he gets a break, has two in a row, and a 21 pin lead. Yeah, and I know this style's held up through the years. Looks like he's not going anywhere. Pretty simple game, and Walter made a, a really neat comment last night when we spoke with him. He said, he said, you know, I watched the young kids coming out on tour today and, and the kids that I bowl with in pro-ams, and he says they all hook it. You don't see anybody learning how to be more accurate and throw it straighter, yet I've won 42 times doing that. See, Tommy really took off late in his matches after some tough starts. You can't afford a tough start here on TV. In a one-game match, Norm, as you know, you got to come out firing immediately. Well, you do, and you have to get off to that start just to let your opponent know that it's not going to be an easy match. And uh, Jones opens with the open in the first frame, but coming back with a double keeps him in it. Walter knows he's there. Tommy talked to us last night about that little mini slump after his tremendous run last year where he won four titles. Two straight losses now on TV for him, including that roll-off with Doug Kent thriller to open up our U.S part of our tour in Milwaukee in October. Yeah! Tommy said that really stuck with him, Randy, because it was a major, and he felt had he been able to edge out Doug Kent, he probably could have run the table on the step ladder and won that event. Yeah, I think that affected him for a couple of weeks, and then his daughter was sick, Ella had the croup, his uncle Bill passed away, so he's been struggling the last couple of weeks. Also, a little bit of a physical issue working on some spine tilt, but he feels like he's back and he's throwing it well now. Throw to TV for Walter Ray. There goes that late five pin as he's locked in. Walter Ray, traditional path to the pocket. Norm doesn't like to alter very much. No, he doesn't. You know, he will hook the ball, but he doesn't like to, especially not at 47 years old. But I'll tell you, he does know that Tommy Jones is beatable the first game or early in the rounds. Now, once Outside boards start to dry out. Tommy becomes untouchable. Come on, come on. Look out. Norm, I'm not so sure that he doesn't like to. I don't think he needs to. Well, he doesn't need to. He is a legend, guys. 42 titles. We talked about that. 154 TV appearances. That's first all time. There's the 10 pin. 39 second place finishes. 30. Nine. No question, the definition of a legend on the Denny's PBA Tour. And he wants to get to Tommy very early in this match. When you look at those titles, though, 42 titles. Mm. Now, they did count the Masters for Walter Ray. They didn't for Earl Anthony. Norm, what's the number? Well, the number in Walter Ray's head, I think, is... 43, but the number in the PBA's head is 41, and that's been eclipsed, so end of story. Walter Ray did say, though, that if he won 60 titles, he still would feel that Earl was always the best. Oh, what a great shot by Tommy there. And he feels like Earl was better because it took Earl far less time to so get to the 43 title plateau. There's the record banner over the shoulder of Walter A. Williams, Jr. He won number 40 here in Wycliffe, Ohio, two seasons ago. And Tommy's road to TV told us last week, very frustrated because he hadn't made match play for the first time in a couple of years. But as Randy talked about, some personal struggles. His daughter, Ella Claire, not feeling well. His uncle, better, with whom he was very close, Took that loss very hard, passing away. This ball drifts a little bit high, and Tommy leaves a four pin, and now he trails in the match by one pin. But when you looked at Tommy's road to get here today, one of the guys that he beat was Chris Warren. And it was funny because he said Chris Warren was one of the guys he used to love to watch on television. Walter Ray Williams Jr., the legend, against the young gun Tommy Jones, head to head. We've got a great match here. It's the first of two semifinals, the Ace Hardware Championship from Cleveland. Let's flash back just two seasons ago. Wycliffe, Ohio, Uniroyal Tire Classic in this very bowling center. Walter Ray Williams Jr. trying to climb the ladder and catch the late great Earl Anthony for 41 titles. He took on Doug Cannon in the championship round. Each had outstanding scores that day. A strike fest as Walter Ray tried to get to number 40. 
in the end, he was just too good for Doug Kent. And he took home his historic 40th title. Now, of course, he's got 42 and has the all-time Denny's PBA Tour title record. Ace Hardware Championship is brought to you by Ace, the official hardware store of the PBA. Ace, the helpful place. By Denny's, Denny's always works. By Columbia 300, the official PBA supplier of high-performance bowling balls. Columbia bowls the world over. And by Discover Card, it's time a credit card put you in the driver's seat. Who won his first ever event back here in Cleveland in 1983? A young 18-year-old from Texas, Norm Duke. Made some history in the Cleveland area. Youngest Duke, ever Duke, to win Duke. on the Denny's PBA Tour. Still a record at 18 years old. Oh boy, Who wants the money back day. then? <laughs> a great day for you. How about the guys on our current money list here? Doug Kent, who won the Masters, took home 100000 Walter Ray won a lot of dollars in yen in Japan, 50000 American dollars at the Japan Cup. Wes Ballot having a great season. Four shows already for him. Tommy Jones, Ryan Schaefer, all four guys in the top ten. Yeah, and they are in the top ten, and all of them are going to improve their position today. But no one is going to get to Doug Kent, not this week. Mm. Here is Walter Ray by a pin. All ten down. So back to your first title, Norm. Memories of that big day for you. 1983. Earl Anthony. That was the big memory because my opening match on television was against the mm. great Earl. And wow. I had bowled him two matches prior. Uh, one to make the telecast. And then, as so happened, the last game in the position round. So it was three games in a row against the Earl Anthony. Wasn't there, there was a bunch of stiffs on that show. Earl and wasn't there Mark Roth on that show as well? No, but Steve Cook was okay. there. Okay. Steve Cook. Walter Ray with the ball yeah, ratchet he wanted there. Doing that for. Yeah, that's the third time on the left lane he's at least come out half pocket. Twice in the shaker zone, as you call it, Dave. This would be that zone. Well, I remember bowling Roll Anthony a match play, and it, and it was scary because you know you throw four or five in a row and you get this three or four obligatory applauses in the back. Careful. Same Look out. exact thing Tommy Jones did Amazing. to start the match. Amazing. But coming this late, the match could have a disastrous effect. Chops the eight pin on the four eight spare. Yeah, both of them using this orange and yellow ball. Maybe that's it. Oh. Can't be the Denny's ball. And and then Earl steps up and Earl just makes a mark and the place goes crazy. I never liked bowling against Earl Anthony. He had the biggest following you always knew where Earl was bowling and what Perry was bowling on by the sound of the applause. All right, guys, let's see if Tommy Jones can take advantage here. Ah. Did not hustle into the pocket either the way he wanted ah. on the back end of the Viper oil pattern. That is awful. And a single pin spare. Yeah, and for most of the players this week, this zone was a split. That was what the Viper did was if you missed the pocket, you got a split. Well, Tommy Jones put so much on his bowling ball that it seemed like a pin always was on assignment to another pin, knocking out the split. Has a single pin spare. Interestingly enough, Walter Ray actually missed the single pin spare conversion this week. He broke a streak of 475 straight. Where? Single pin conversion. First frame of his on lane 84. game one match against Chris Hayden. Down to the pin deck. And now he's talking about something down lane. Something on the lane, so our lane technician will head down to see what the situation is. I was trying to put an obstacle. <laughs> it's amazing that at his age, Walter Ray can still see that far down the lane. I can, I can barely see the one three. Yeah, but it was a coin. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> well, that would make sense then. Exactly. It was money. No, let him get situated. We'll see if this break will affect either bowler. And pin lead now for Tommy Jones from Greenville, Spartanburg, area of South Carolina, eighth frame. Can the young gun take down a legend? No Big week shot, best shot of the day. No week ten there when Tommy Jones lets go of it. You won't see a, a week ten. No, I haven't seen a week ten by Tommy Jones since I've been on tour. <laughs> It's either a bird dog 10 or a ring in 10 or a strike. Bird dog 10. That's when one of them's on assignment. 
This time it's trip 4 8. <laughs> Guys, is the overlay we talked about when we described the Viper oil pattern affecting the players today? Well, you know, it it always affects the players because it's, you know, it's what they bowl on. But as far as where they're playing, uh, no. Both players are in their wheelhouse right now. I think it's just who can come up here right now in the ninth and ten and perform. Hit the lane Sunday afternoon. Coverage continues of the Denny's PBA Tour. We're going to Baltimore, Maryland. First time I've been there in a few years. Danny Wiseman, Tim Chris, Baltimore area bowlers try to win it in front of their hometown fans. Sunday, 1 o'clock Eastern here on ESPN. As we head toward the Christmas break, two more shows to go. Baltimore, Long Island, and then I'll take some time off for the holidays. Ha! That's a little better. Big strike, Walter Ray, this late in the match. Walter Ray could strike out for 237. Tommy Jones could strike out for 247. But if Tommy Jones does not strike on the right lane, Walter Ray can shut him out. Walter Ray pumped for that big strike a moment ago. Must strike here. Ninth frame. Foundation frame to set up the tenth. Looks for the double. No, oh, one for me! Not in the one three pocket, but he'll take it. Well, it's close to it. Carbon copy of the trick four eight that Walter Ray did on that right lane in the eighth frame. This is just all about skill and hand. Watch this. Here's the deal. Two strikes in the tenth frame and one pin. And Tommy Jones is a winner. Yeah, and he's already given Walter Ray a double in the tenth. So, in his mind, he has to strike. Came in a bit high, four pin. Boy, and I thought, that lane hooks. I thought he'd really do it on that lane because it hooks. I thought that was his good lane. Now he's in the 220s. So a spare and a strike will force Walter Ray to double in the 10th. And we do have a really good possibility of a tie. Wow. Remember the roll-off we had earlier this year? We talked about that. Tommy Jones, Doug Kent, the Masters in Milwaukee, where Doug had nine on his shot. Tommy thought he had a better shot, only got six pins, lost the roll-off. Doug Kent went on to win that tournament, and that loss has stuck Corey. with Tommy since then. He still didn't want to talk about it when we brought it up last night with him. As he told us, he hates to lose at anything. He won't play table tennis or hoops with someone if he thinks he might lose. Well, not only that, you only get four shots at the majors, and when you're sitting there that close to winning one, to let it get away, you know, it takes you a couple of weeks to get away, to get through that. That's big. Yeah, that makes Walter Ray get two strikes in the tenth to win. A strike nine spare gives them a tie at 226. That was big. Looked like he just moved another board to the left, maybe two. He chased it. He moved off of his bar reaction, moved a little bit left, and said, all right, the lane broke down in front of me. I didn't know it going in, and I make the move. Now, Walter Ray needs two right here. Lost it off his hand. Yep. Just did that. Missed it. Won't get the break, and that's right. it. He is mystified, and Tommy Jones will win this match and make the finals. Well, that's the first time I have, in, in recent memory anyway, that I've watched Walter Ray not get a strike when he needed it. Yeah, it looked like he just missed it here. If you look at the shot that he threw on the left lane prior to this, ball really sucked up right into the pocket. That one looked like he just missed it a hair. Remember, the last time on that lane, he was kind of light pocket, leaving the 4-8. Yeah, I'm sorry, he tripped well, the 4-8 well, well, out, but barely. Yeah, he had to get full hand in this because he wasn't getting the type of roll on there he's expecting. Shout out back home for Tommy Jones. And Kristen and 13-month-old daughter Ella Claire are watching closely as dad tries to take home his ninth title. He's taken down the legend. The young gun defeats Walt Ray Williams Jr., the Hall of Famer, by 10 pins. He'll make the final against either Ryan Schaefer or Wes Milan. So for now, who has the upper hand? 
one of the youngsters. Tommy Jones takes it over Walter Ray. Let's flash back to the 1989 TPC Championship. Taylor, Michigan, outside Detroit. What a final. Amleto Monticello taking on Brian Voss. Amleto, a Hall of Famer, had a six-bagger to put the pressure on BB. We needed this strike to stay alive. The messenger came across the deck and almost knocked out the 10-pin, but left it standing. Then Amleto needed one more strike to put Brian Voss away, and he got it. Amleto Monticelli took home the Bud Touring Players Championship in Taylor, Michigan. A flashback to 1989. Tommy Jones hopes one day to be in the Hall of Fame. He may get there after a big win in the semifinals over Walter A. Williams Jr. West Mullet Ryan Shane for the other match coming up. So often, bowling fans watching on TV out there ask about Gang's PBA Tour oil patterns. How difficult are they, and how do they compare to the typical house pattern? Let's get the answer from Randy and Norm. Today, Norm and I are going to talk about the differences between a typical house shot and a professional shot. Now, Norm, I'm going to throw a shot on this house shot. Tell me how I'm supposed to play this pattern. Well, what Randy's going to bowl on is what you'll see on your typical league night, where outside of the second arrow, there's no oil. Inside of the second arrow, there's a pile. So what we're going to do is move Randy all the way to the left side, throw it outside of the second arrow on the right, Randy, and it just rebounds to the pocket. It's adult bumper bowling on this lane. I like that, Norm. So stand left and anywhere to the right. Anywhere I want. to the right outside of second arrow should just pardon. be fine. Here goes. There's a second arrow. Flush. Wow. That works out just perfect on most of your house conditions. That's awesome. I'm going to do the same thing on the pro shot. Well, I wouldn't recommend that, Randy, because on what the professionals bowl on is a pattern that outside of second arrow has a lot of oil. So you're going to throw your ball outside of the second arrow, and it's just going to skate on that oil. It probably won't recover and hit the pocket, Randy. That's impossible. Well, show hey, me. Let me show you how it's done, pal. Show me. Stand in the same spot. I'm just going to wheel right. And that is typical on a professional oil pattern that when you just sell your ball outside of the second arrow it's going to stay there there's slicker down the lane outside of the second arrow it's not going to recover back to the pocket what am i supposed to do now well what i would do randy on this professional pattern is i would stand on that oily spot and try to get my ball to feather up toward the pocket earlier and let the ball lay down in the pocket why don't you show me how it's done i'll try to do that so i'm going to be standing way right randy and i'm going to go straight up the second arrow first arrow excuse me Wow, buddy, that was beautiful. Thank beautiful. Randy. And that's why Norm Duke has 24 titles, and yours truly is doing television. But seriously, Norm, obviously a big difference between a typical house shot and your pro shot. Now, what else can amateurs expect to see bowling on these professional patterns? Well, there's a more challenging condition. Therefore, the scoring environment is going to be lower. So you have to be patient, because now those 200 games, they're winners. All right, guys, let's talk about the PBA experience, the combo effort of USBC and PBA. Now all the bowlers out there, if they join their leagues by January 1st, coming up this new year, can experience the PBA lane conditions. You can see how the pros attack any given lane condition. All five patterns are used, what adjustments they make while you're watching on TV, and then try, try it yourself. Starting January 1st, offering a new line of awards reflect the significance of shooting a high game in this challenging environment. Awards will carry both PBA and USBC marks. Go to PBA.com or Bowl.com for more. How about women's hoops coming your way on ESPN Sunday night? Two of the nation's top teams, Candace Parker, leads the Lady Vols against North Carolina. Sunday showdown presented by Altel Wireless. Tonight, ESPN, 8 o'clock Eastern, also available in high definition. On ESPN HD, call your cable operator or satellite provider today. ESPN, the exclusive home of the women's NCAA basketball championship. Coming up, Wes Mallott, who last week celebrated with his young son, Jordan against Ryan Schaefer, who's made 40 TV appearances. They're head-to-head -head next. One young gun has advanced already. Tommy Jones, a 10-pin win over legendary Hall of Famer, Walter A. Williams, Jr. Now another youngster, Wes Malott, fresh off a victory last week in Chicagoland. Goes for another win. Special thanks going out today to Andrew Vitilaro. 
Promotion specialist for Ace Hardware, Vitaliro. I'm sorry about that. Let me mispronounce that the first time through from Ace Hardware. Yeah, this is our first look at Ryan Schaefer. What a practical joker he is. He's got a dry sense of humor, always doing things funny. Gets help on number 10. Nice. Yeah. So a couple of weeks ago, he put some mail in hands with Phil and, and Tommy Jones' bag. Randy, what do you make of that? Uh, that sounds like a party I don't need to go to, Norm. Anyway, Ryan Schaefer kicks the 10 out late and in Ryan Schaefer fashion celebrates. Big Wes Malott, bid for his third title. Has all 10 down. A big, quiet Texan. He is as soft-spoken and laid back as they come. And I'm gonna ask you about that. After we check out the Ace Hardware matchup between these two, as we told you, 41 appearances now on TV for Ryan Schaefer. What he needs to do, Norm, at this point of his career, is start amassing some titles. Well, he, started, he has to start winning on television. I mean, he's got a losing match game record on television, a losing match game record in final matches. You know, he's got to turn that around. Conversely, you got Wes Malott. Seldom says anything. He just throws strikes and wins matches. On TV, as we talked about, a tour best fourth time. Japan Cup, eighth place. Nine guys made it to the TV show in Tokyo. We'll see Ryan's information from Horseheads, New York. Southern tier of New York State, not far from Binghamton, Syracuse area. And there is Michelle, his wife. Flew in last night from Elmira, hometown of Ernie Davis. Former Syracuse star running back won the Heisman Trophy and a national championship back in 1959. And what's interesting early on in this match is Wes Malott, who's the big hook guy, is going really straight. And Ryan Schaefer, who's not a, he's not straight. I mean, he can hook at some, but you certainly would, wouldn't put him in the same category as a Tommy Jones and Wes Malott. He's got to be two arrows left of Wes and going completely around this oil pattern. Yeah, and hard to believe, given the pattern and given the su success that Tommy has enjoyed. I would have thought that Wes would be hooking the ball more, but here's Ryan. Hold it. Hello. Schaefer crossing over, almost went Brooklyn there. Got a late break, just the 10-pin standing for Ryan. Gonna make some adjustments now, Norm. Well, you know, that might be why Wes Malott's throwing it so straight. Ryan seemed to just cut that ball off just a little, but then leaving the 3-6-10 originally before the... Pin started dominoing. Single pin numbers so far this week for Ryan Schaefer. We've got 61 events without a win. A loft on that ball, and there's the 10 pin. Yeah, Dave, you, you cut off a shot like that, you'd like to see a four pin. That tells you you've got a little room to the pocket. When you're looking at the 3610, that's not a good thing. 21st year on tour for Ryan Schaefer. He says he'd like to maintain his consistency, maybe bowl out here for. Five, six more years. The numbers for West getting to the TV show. From Argyle, Texas, near Dallas. Oh! Ten down for West. And Norm, as we talked about, a quiet assassin. This guy doesn't really say a lot. Tries to stay below the radar. And he's not as intense as some of the other players are on tour. Why do you think he has such success with that motive? Well, as intimidating as he is, you know, just to look at him, why, why in the world talk and mess that up? I'm going to tell you why he's so good. You see this guy? He changes roles. Look how end over end his role is this week versus last week when he was going around it, flipping his hand around the side. This Wait. guy has got the entire package now. I All think right, he's sorry. learned a lot from rooming with Tommy Jones. He's got confidence. He's winning. But he can bowl on anything now because physically he's got a great swing. And look at that hand step the back now. That's what keeps it on line, and that's what matched up well with this week's wall pattern. Thanks, Gary. Tough week for Wes last week. We talked about his young son Jordan, just three years old, spent Thanksgiving Day, <laughs> fortunately for the. Poor young man in the hospital had a virus. And Wes and his wife, Meredith, going back and forth to make sure Jordan was okay. In the end, he wins the tournament, capping off an emotional week.
back on TV the next week. Different lane conditions showing us he's versatile. Head to head, Ryan Schaefer, who's got all 10 down. The Bulldog, Norm, you know, the thing I really like about Ryan Schaefer is, first of all, he's fearless. He doesn't get enough credit for his abilities out here. And he's got a very interesting roll or tilt that seems to carry the 10 pin out at times when it doesn't look like it should. Well, yeah, he's got what I call an outside thumb. If you draw a straight line right straight through the bowling ball, north to south, at the release point, Ryan Schaefer's thumb will be to the right of that line. Most players will fold that hand where the thumb is left of that line. Wow, look at that ball suck up off the spot down there. Made a U-turn at about 45 feet. And that's what that type of roll will give you. That was better. Watch this. See how his hand's left? No grab on that one. Rotates around the side. Fourth arrow out to about, oh, let's say the five board, and just does a U-turn. That bowling ball there needs a blinker. Turn turns left. Turn signal, son. <laughs> that was fun. It's a great look from our crew lane level. You see the TV appearances for Wes here back to back. Had a brilliant start to last season, Sorry, guys, where he made the first four shows, won his first career title in Denver, and then did not appear on TV again the rest of the season. Here he goes, same sort of start. Four TV shows to begin the season out of six weeks. We asked him last night about consistency. Can he stay consistent all year long this time, Norm? I think so. You know, he's gotten a lot better. As Randy said, he's put a couple more clubs in his bag, and not only is he pulling them out, he's using them, using them good. I've never seen Wes Malott throw it this straight. I haven't either. I think it's real impressive what he's doing. Not to mention the fact that he's bowling on a wood surface, a high friction surface, and he likes that because he throws hard. His fifth year on back on top, baby. The young guns saying hello to family and friends back right, home tonight, here in Dallas, Texas. The conclusion of this exciting semi to see who takes on Jones Whoa. next. The Ace Hardware Championship is brought to you by Bear. The more you know, the more you trust Bear. By Geico. 15 minutes can save you 15% on car insurance. Visit geico.com. By Columbia 300, the official PBA supplier of high-performance bowling balls. Columbia bowls the world over. Second semifinal here in Wycliffe, Ohio, near Cleveland, in progress. Ryan Schaefer down 10 pins, but each bowler working on a double. Wes up 10. A strike here for Schaefer coming up. We'll even up the match. Let's check out the Atonic Edge. Randy Peterson on Wes Malott. And Norm hit it on the head. Wes Malott's got some new toys now to work with, and it's all about release. This is his A release. This is when he's hooking it. He likes to get that hand to flip around the side of it and create a lot of hook. You'll see it here from the front. Watch that hand rotate around the side. Well, what, what's making the difference in Wes Malott's game is this shot right here. And that's the one he's using this week, where he can keep his hand more up the back and go straighter when he has to. This is the first ever head-to-head -head TV matchup between Ryan Schaefer and Wes Malott. Where are the numbers? Looks for the turkey here. Tommy Jones, victory over Walter Ray Williams Jr. was that first ever matchup between the young gun and the legend. <laughs> Crossing over, coming in way high, and a seven pin count for Schaefer. Never got it far enough to the right. I go through it. And that was kind of the common theme this week in talking to the players. They said one thing with all of this friction, unless you're going really, really straight, the ball has to go to the right, and that one never had a chance. Yeah, and the big tendency right out of commercial break is to soften up and let up on it. That's the one thing you cannot get away with on this pattern in this bowling center. Does get all three down. Nicely done. 3-6-10. And has the spare. So, last five times Ryan has been on TV against our Norm Duke. Title match in Atlanta in 05. He lost that one by 20 pins. He's gone down to some unbelievable Ooh. bowlers. Wow. Pete, Tommy Jones, and then back-to-back -back with Walter Ray, the world championship of Walter Ray's high to rules record, and then the Japan Cup when he broke the record. Very difficult competition. And now a split. Norm, what do you think? Did it look a little firm to you? Well, it looked right. It looked a little bit of firm. A little firm. It looked like he didn't want to leave that 3-6-10 again. 
And, you know, he could have got a break here and just left the 10, maybe just the 8. No, the 8, 10. Now he's in trouble. <laughs> 21 year tour veteran. Needs experience for this one and leaves the 8 pin in open frame this late. Okay. Spells disaster the way Malat has been bowling and how hot Big Wes has been. Other finishers this week. At the East Hardware Championship, there's Jason Couch. These bowlers in a match play. Chris Barnes, who was the top seed last week in Chicago. Mike Scroggins' brother Mark has withdrawn from the oh tour boy, this year. Taking oh. a deferment because of a hamstring tear. Yeah, the 4 8 spare just seems to be, you know, awfully common today, especially on the right lane. Oh, the same color ball. <laughs> that ball's missed not one but two. It's not the same ball. Hit him, hit him. Well, he does. It's not one for same. three today on us. Maybe the so. same color. They're all made out of plastic. And Tony Reyes won a tour earlier this year to her title. Danny Wiseman returning home to the Baltimore area. Other finishers here. And congratulations to Kelly Kulik. There she is, 31st place in the top 32, <laughs> making match play for the first time in her career. Yeah, congratulations to her. She beat yes. a lot of folks this week. She sure did. First ever woman to earn an exemption as she fared well enough at the tour trials this past June. Way to go, Kelly. And I talked to her boyfriend, Jim Tomek, and I said, why did Kelly do so well this week? And he said, well, you know, she grew up on the East Coast, a lot of wood surfaces on the East Coast, and she likes bowling on that wood. So, way to go, kid. Well, not to mention that she's settling down a little bit. You know, it takes a little while, I'm, I'm assuming, to get used to bowling with the guys, and I think she's doing extraordinarily well. All right, guys, here's Schaefer. Eighth frame coming off the open. Nope. Crossing over and a six pin. Can't play right. Can't throw it hard. Troubles enough. continue here for Ryan Schaefer. He's trying to make a big statement against one of the young guns today, but the odds are not with him now, certainly, this late in the match. Ryan needs to get on track here and get on track in a hurry because with a spare here, the best he can shoot is 223. West Malott's already going at a 227 pace. Unless something changes, it's going to be a title match. Rumor, roommate versus roommate, Tommy Jones and West Malott. And they are best of friends. There you see the numbers in finals, TV finals, on shows for Ryan. So since his last title, we talked about the 61 event drought. Well, you know, in his defense, most of the tournaments that he's been making the shows are in majors where you're going to have Hall of Famers. And it's hard to beat Hall of Famers on a major condition. That last win, there's a 10 pin, was the 03 Empire State Open in New York State. And since then, Norm, seven TV shows before today. Four and seven with a 215 average on TV. So getting the show hasn't been that big a problem for Ryan, but winning has. Well, and you know, he, he's averaging 215 in those telecasts. But on the major conditions, when you find, you know, five-thirds, you know, that's not a bad average for those majors. Yeah, and the only chance he's going to have in this match is breaking out the Tanya Harding stick and clubbing Wes in the kneecaps. <laughs> I doubt that happens. There's a 10 pin. If anyone was going to do that, it's Ryan Chase. <laughs> Absolutely. He is the tour prankster, but I don't think he'll inflict physical damage, I hope, on Wes Milan. That would be quite a challenge. Wes is considerably larger than everyone on tour, pretty much. That's why you use a stick against him. It's the equalizer. <laughs> Foundation frame, chance for a 35-pin lead. West works on a strike. Let's <laughs> wow. have a look at 10 more down. 60 feet to success for West Milan. This is last week, and West Milan was using a lot of the lane, and to do that, he needs a lot of hand and getting around the side of it. But this is why West Milan is so good. Look at his hand now. Look how straight he's going. It's amazing with that much hook and that much hand. He's figured it out, Norm. He's figured out a way to go straight when he has to. Well, right, and he's throwing the ball straight when the lanes are really hooking and was hooking the ball when the lanes were really straight, which is... You know what that means? That means trouble for the rest of you boys. Yes, it does. Needed six, gets ten. West will advance. He has won this match 
and he'll take on his best friend and roommate, Tommy Jones. The two top young guns will go head-to-head -head in an old-fashioned shootout here in Cleveland in the championship match. And I asked Tommy, I said, you know, what's it going to be like if you get the ball of your roommate for the title? He says, well, Randy, I can guarantee it's going to be a lot of fun. So stay tuned. Wes trying a new ball there, or a different ball. A lot of our great bowlers, Norm Alma, Denny's PBA Tour, like yourself, are 40 years or older. But the young guys are coming along here, trying to make a statement. Today's a big step toward that. Yeah, they've been making statements the last two or three years. That's why it's, you know, a lot of talk about the changing of the guard. I mean, you could see it coming with this guy. I mean, West Moab is a real deal. And he just needed some time. No, wait. He needed to figure it out and figure out what West Moab needed to do. Now it's Tommy Jones. That's my club, baby. He's figured it out. Bring it. Yeah, and Tommy Jones has figured it Ready out. And we're going to get to see which of these young guns has it better today. You have a prediction? I like Tommy Jones because he's going to hook the ball a little more. All right, I'll take West. Well, you take West. I will. We always take the big guys. <laughs> Tommy's not exactly small. West has had a great season, guys. Says this match is over. Leads the tour in points. Ball just ahead of Pete Weber. He leads the tour in average as well. Coming into this match, 227.99. Fifth in earnings on the Denny's PBA Tour. So what a year it's been already for West Malott. This will be fast track since the match has been clinched by West. And Schaefer will finish out. Well, the That's good news is I saved a lot of money on my car insurance. The Elmira <laughs> Express. Well, you know, this was just confusing for Ryan. All week long, the pattern really benefited the big hook players. So Ryan Schaefer makes the show, playing the big hook, comes on television with the big hook, and all the big hook players are throwing it straight. I think he was, I think he was a little confused. Yeah, he got a yeah, yeah, in practice, and he thought it, it was a good look doing what he was doing. Obviously, that's why he picked the Duke to, to attack the old pattern One that more. way. Back to back. Coming your way. 55-pin victory for Wes Malott over Ryan Schaefer in the second semifinal. That means the championship match is set. You will not want to miss it. Two young guns. The future of the Denny's PBA Tour head-to-head -head for a title next. Let's go on the road with the Denny's PBA Tour. Beltway Classic coming up. Baltimore, Maryland Pro-Am times are available on PBA.com. Tickets available as well. Country Club Lanes in Baltimore, Maryland. Then the week after, we're headed to Long Island, West Babylon, New York. And that'll be the final tour stop before the Christmas break. A few weeks off, then we resume in January in Medford, Oregon, at Lava Lanes, the home of Marshall Holman. Looking forward to that. Pro-Am times and dates, 13th and 16th. All information available at PBA.com. Wes Malak getting set to take on Tommy Jones. Second time they'll meet on TV last year in Tulsa. They did it. Tommy won that title. Can Wes get revenge like against his roommate today? I can thumb well, the skills challenge returns away. again this year. We can't yeah, wait. All the exciting one, action like, is on the yeah, way. No, like to see the skills challenge tapings to check out some of those amazing shots from our great Denny's PBA Tour bowlers Beltway Classic in Baltimore and the Earl Anthony Medford Classic Lava Lanes in Medford Oregon for more information log on to PBA.com that should be a lot of fun Norm Duke has won a skills challenge title same for Chris Barnes who wins this year we find out 
But first, we answer this question. Who wins in suburban Cleveland? Tommy Jones or his roommate and best friend, Wes Ballot? We find out next. It's the championship match coming up. The matchups. To this point, Tommy Jones knocking off the legend, the Hall of Famer, Walter Ray Williams Jr. with his 42 tour titles. Wes Blott took down Ryan Schaefer, and the roommates and best friends are set to match up head-to-head -head for the second time on TV for a championship. Let's check in with a Geico championship recap, Randy, to see how we got this far. You betcha, Dave. In semifinal number one, Tommy Jones defeated Walter Ray Williams Jr. That's right, I said Walter Ray Williams Jr by the score of 226 to 216. In semifinal number two, big Wes Malott defeated Ryan Schaefer by the score of 257 to 202. Big Wes dominated the match from the start, advancing to his third championship match of the season, setting up a great matchup with his tour roommate, Tommy Jones. So far, Wes won and won those championship matches. Bring it on. The winner last week, suburban Chicago. Here we're in Cleveland. Now they're best buddies. Head to head for a title. Four pin. Yeah, he did change balls there. You know, you look like uh, in the 11th and 12th shots in his first game that he was considering a ball change. Norm, is that a good sign or a bad sign? When a player come, starts the title match after having all that practice, comes out and leaves a four pin. Well, you know, in a ball chain scenario, I don't think a four pin is that bad. You know, you can make a little bit of micro adjustment on the left lane, and, and he might string a bunch of strikes with it. But, you know, I, I'm with him. I think that the lanes are drying out a little bit, and it's time for that step left and throw it toward the gutter, like I watched these two guys do for three days. seven here for Tommy Jones to deal with after Wes Malott got nine spare in his first frame. Lomax weekly update. 58 last week, but as we talked about, it was a very difficult week for Tommy Jones. His little daughter, 13-month-old Ella Claire, was sick back home, feeling well. She's better. That's a nice to report. However, his uncle Bill Jones passed away. They were very close. Feel like a, a grandfather to Tommy Jones. Leading us to the Ace Hardware matchup. Tommy told us yesterday, Norm, that no matter what happens, they're each going to drive with each other to the airport after this. Go <laughs> home to Texas and South Carolina. They will be friends, but for now, it's all business. Well, they have to. I don't think Ryan Schaefer's going to give him a ride. <laughs> <laughs> very unlikely. <laughs> Back to TJ, who's got all 10 down. So, I mean, there was a reason why you, you like Tommy Jones in this match. And you, you know a lot more than I do, but uh, well, this, this next shot by Wes Moore, it's going to say a lot about this match. Yeah, you're right. But, you know, I got to sit right behind Tommy Jones the whole time in qualifying, and it was just amazing watching the pins hit other pins. He was the last one to do it, guys. Back-to-back -back titles. Japan Cup. Tulsa last year. Oh. There is an eight pin. Splinters everywhere around that pin. Somehow it doesn't get struck. No, nothing hits it. I don't know how. Seems like a ball went right through it. Ball goes right by it. That's not very friendly. Single pin numbers. There you see it for West. Down a pin early. <laughs> Yeah, he's still testing the waters. You know, normally he'd pick up that spare ball right. and go right down the middle of the lane at that eight pin, but testing the waters, he takes First the same ball, takes the big hook at it. Tommy's already, Tommy's already given him the business. He told him that the first shot was much better. These guys are best friends, and Tommy told us it'd be pretty fun. They finally got to meet again on TV for a title, as they did last year. Hit. Yes. Perfect shot, all 10 down, Wes Malott. 
who drove home to the Dallas area with his wife Meredith, young son Jordan, after their win in Chicago land yeah, last week. 16-hour drive or so. And then after Jordan was sick with his virus last week, Wes came down with something, and he said even this morning when we saw him, Randy was not close to 100%. Yeah, he said he likes to he likes to bowl when he's not feeling 100%. He says it relaxes him. I'm like, well, I don't think I'd ever want to be sick, whether I was bowling or doing anything else. But he says it relaxes him a little bit more, and he kind of takes a little bit of the pressure off. He doesn't think about throwing strikes as much. He just tries to get through it, and in turn, just makes the swing looser, and he throws a lot of strikes. Tommy Jones has the player microphone adjusted. Now he's set. Third frame. Wow. Light hit, and look what's left. Yeah, he goes from the fast eight, a little bit Not creeping like high on the head pin. Moves just a little bit left, sends it to the gutter, and it hangs right there. 210. Just never took off, did it, Norm, on the back end of the oil pattern. There are the split numbers for Tommy. How do you attack this one? Just going to get the ball over here to this side of the two and throw it into the 10. Let have a look at it. Whoa, he whiffed the two. And leaves two pins and open frame for Tommy Jones in the third. What happened, Norm? Well, you know, what happened was Wes Malat takes the lead, lead on the bench even after the solid eight in the second frame. Tommy's down by 13 now. He just needs to start a string. It's going to take a string to win this game. Both players know it. <laughs> Late nudge on number nine as that ball blasted through the one three pocket. Tommy rebounds nicely. That hit hard. It sure did. He was angry with himself after the open frame. Can Wes Mala take advantage? He works on a strike, tries to expand the lead. When we return to suburban Cleveland, it's the final. Sweet marks the 33rd Denny's PBA Tour event held in the Cleveland area, second in the last three years after this region did not host an event since 1993. We're glad to be back. And Glenn Gable, Dave Pats, CEO and COO of Freeway Lane. Special thanks to those gentlemen. They're great staff here at Freeway. 96 Lane Bowling Center. Guys, place is just incredible. And ready has some other information to pass along. Yeah, Neil, uh, or excuse me, Noel Lederbach is the general manager here. And Noel's mom, Joanne, is battling cancer out in Las Vegas. And we just wanted to send our well wishes out to her and the Lederbach family. I've known Noel for 20 some odd years. He used to bowl out here, Norm, and he's just a great, great guy and just a, a wonderful family. Yeah, shout out to Joanne. No, Malott 13 pin lead. Works on the strike. Thank oh, you. 10 down for Big West Malott. Thinking about taking down his roommate and best buddy, Tommy Jones, here in the final. The matchup of two young guns. Head to head. The supremacy in the room may be shifting towards West Malott. That would mean that Tommy Jones would now have to give up the bottom bunk and take the top bunk. Well, if I'm 6'4", I'm going to own, <laughs> I'm going I'm to take whatever bunk I want. <laughs> and that is Wes Malott at 6'4", 250 pounds. At 5'4", I sleep on the floor. Has the oh, lead. No. Oh, 10 down, Wes <laughs> Malott. <laughs> oh, no. So, uh, Tommy Jones is in trouble, folks, because when that ball got back from that spot, mm -mm -mm. trouble. Time is now, fellas, for Tommy Jones. Down 33. Works on a strike, though. Chance to reduce the lead to 23 pins. Yeah, he, right. he needed, Norm. Yeah, he gets left in the dust if he doesn't get that one right there. Head to PBA.com for all the latest on Bowl Space, the first online social network exclusively for bowlers at Bowl Space. You can set up a pro profile and share pictures, videos, stories with other bowlers. In addition, one lucky winner will be chosen to receive a virtual coaching lesson from PBA player and a PBA prize pack. Simply click on Bowl Space on that link on PBA.com today. Be sure to check that out. In addition to results from this tournament today here in Cleveland, 10 down.
for Tommy Jones, who knows he cannot afford a mistake now. Yeah, he pured that one. That, that was magnificent there when he needed it. He knows that he can't let Wes Malak get too far in front. Running out of frames, we're now in the sixth frame, and that was probably as big as a shot in the fifth. Yeah, you have to shoot back at this point. You know, if you're just ducking, they just... <laughs> you're right. Yeah, they just run off and leave you. And this guy brought a cannon. It's for a 23 pin lead. Yeah. Wow. He may not miss again. He is locked into the one three pocket. Wes Malott showing us so much versatility and a big change from the conditions last week as he tries to win back to back tour titles. First time since Tommy Jones did that last year. Now, guys, I'm interested about what we talked about regarding Jones last year his versatility, how he was able to play so well in different conditions. Now we're seeing that, Randy, from Wes Malott. And you wonder if, if some of what Tommy Jones did last year filtered in the Wes Malott's game this year. Play. Uh-oh. Just on cue, a 7-10. Oh, my. I wonder what Tommy Jones is thinking at this moment. Because he's like you and I, wondering if Wes is going to miss, period. Not only does he miss, he gives Tommy Jones the chance of a lifetime. Does he ever at this point in the match? Seventh frame, and look out, he missed them both, so that hurts with count two. Nice little tear move. And Jess Stayrook, 1991, Tucson, Arizona, still the count last two. on TV to convert the 7 10. It's only been done three times in history on TV on the Denny's PBA Tour. Norm, now, can Jones take advantage? Excuse me, Dave. Norm, uh, this thing's got a glare. Just flip your finger. Just take that, put it around your back. Your, your, your badge. Thanks. It's just glaring. One of the members of our TV crew has his press badge, little glare for Tommy. Players, of course, cannot afford distraction. Way wide. Oh, oh that's right. Pocket. Wow. And a huge strike. For Tommy Jones taking advantage of the Malott open frame, the door opens for Jones. He steps through it. Way right, Norm, but a mitt full of hand at the bottom of the swing. Oh, I know. I watched this the whole time. I can't believe he can get it back from that spot. Why is that, Norm? Well, you know, it's hard to get a ball to spin quick enough to respond off those dry boards. Yeah, they're a little drier than the ones left of them, but look at the angle. He's just throwing it from inside way out there. It has to... Make that big hook and recover. All right, guys, looks here for the four bagger. 13 pin lead. How about that one? Make it five in a row and a big lead for Tommy Jones. Looks like Mr. Momentum has changed his address. You want to talk about reversal of fortune. Russ Malak gave Tommy Jones the opening. Tommy Jones does what all great champions do, Norm. As you know, he takes advantage of the situation. Well, that's true, and I think it's all it all started when Tommy put that first turkey together. Oh, Big strike, Wes Malak, but that open frame in the seventh for him when it looked like he was cruising toward a victory. Had the 7-10 split, only an 8-pin count there drastically altered the result of the match. Yeah, you know, I grew up as a kid with Joe Vito, Buen Rostro in San Antonio, and he said all the time, we were, we were double spar. he said, Norm, you got to shoot back. That's what Tommy did. Wes needs it. <laughs> and he gets There's a truck. truck. Missed the stop. Dave, it's your trade. It's your <laughs> <laughs> there is, in fact, a train going by, <laughs> folks, what Randy's referring to outside the bowling center. Well, Tommy we Jones clearly Express. hear it. It's got Just outside the center. That's why Wes got distracted and stopped things. Beltway Classic coming your way on ESPN next week, 1 o'clock Eastern time. We're headed to Baltimore, where PBA stars Danny Wiseman and Tim Chris, Baltimore area bowlers, will try to win one in front of the hometown fans. Dave, it was the Polar Express. I actually watched that with my kids the other night. Great, great. Great, oh, great film. Old. Yeah. It did. So off the train distraction, we've had bowlers stop in mid-delivery at the 
Now, Coach, for several reasons. First time ever, I think, as I've been involved for five years oh, because of a train whistle. Yeah. Had, but we've had airplane jets flying over the uh, West West responds centers. well. You know, where the jets were so close, you could smell the pilot's aftershave and that, that kind of thing, but never a train. <laughs> That's close. Yeah. All right, guys, looks here for the six bagger. Chance for 13 pin lead. Foundation frame, big shot. Absolutely huge strike. And Tommy Jones is the number one seed coming in. He got choice to starting lane, which determined where he would finish. Right. He's taking a re-rack on the left lane, maybe to buy some time, maybe to ice West Mott, who knows. But here's the thing. He did what he had to do, and that was to strike on his tough lane, the right lane. Now, all West Mott can do is sit back and watch because Tommy Jones can strike in the 10th and 11th and seal the victory. Tommy describes it so far as an up and down season. 15th place, Japan Cup, 13th in Detroit. In Buffalo, Hammond, top 15 results. Last week didn't make match plays we told you about. This one will go a long way for his confidence if he can seal the deal. Oh my! 7 10, can you believe it? You've got to be kidding me. If he goes strike nine, he wins. Strike nine wins. My heart just stopped. And, and this is such a big thing for, for Malad. You know, he leaves a 7-10 on the nose, but then doesn't get any count, allowing Tommy Jones just to get strike in nine instead of double. Counts everything here, too. Get one at least. Gets the 10 pin, but an open frame. Number seven stands. Whoa. Incredible turn. So late in the match. Plus one, the first hit, he's a winner. Unbelievable change of events. This has been just back and forth the entire match. Nine spare strike, we have a tie. That's what he needs. Oh, come on, baby. Nine spare strike, we have a tie. We might have another roll off here. So he needs to spare and a strike. Otherwise, Jones will win sitting on the bench. Wow. <laughs> this is crazy. What a oh, match. Well, I watched this for a whole week, and neither of these players left any. Pins just hit other pins every time. Now it comes down to the <laughs> final 10th frame, and neither one of them get a break. Okay, there's a nine pin. Ten, and we go to extra frame. Now, here's the deal. Wes Watts sitting on the bench. Tommy gets up in the tenth. Wes is going, okay, it's done, it's over. Tommy, Watts seven ten. Tommy sits down and goes, okay, well, it's over. Wes Watts stone nine. What's next? Tommy should say, well, it's over. <laughs> well, it's not now because we, we still have the possibility of a tie. Got a strike for a roll-off. Anything less? Tommy Jones wins his ninth title, sitting on the bench. He likes it. Doesn't get it. Two pin. You haven't hit that spot all day, and now you do. And Tommy Jones on the bench will win the title over his best friend and roommate, Wes Milan. Incredible finish from Cleveland. And these two great bowlers get a standing ovation. Guys, a lot of bullets. A lot of bullets. Wes Mallant needs a moment by himself for good reason. Incredibly dramatic finish from Cleveland. And Tommy Jones, the young gun of the Denny's PBA Tour, takes his night. The Ace Hardware Championship is brought to you by Ace, the official hardware store of the PBA. Ace, the helpful place. By Atonic, the official footwear of the PBA. Atonic, first one there. By Prescription Flomax. And by Motel 6, official lodging partner of the PBA.
for the lowest price of any national chain. Go to motel6.com. What an unbelievably dramatic finish here in Cleveland. West Mallott needed a strike here. His last shot to force a sudden death roll off left a two pin. And that man, Tommy Jones, wins his ninth career title on the bench. <laughs> a reaction of relief for Tommy Jones. How would you best describe that last moment watching Wes's shot? Well, I mean, I have mixed emotions there. I room with Wes. He's one of my best friends out here. And, I, you know, you never want to win that way. But the right lane was a little tricky all day, and we both kind of fought it. But fortunately, I had lane choice, so he had to finish on it. He made a really good shot the first frame, and, or the first shot in the 10th, and, and, and got a bad break. And then uh, I think he made a move on it because he felt like it was time to make a move. And I, th I think the second one was pretty good, too, just the lane got him. Congratulations. Thanks. Sir. Tommy Jones wins here today in suburban Cleveland in thrilling fashion over Wes Mallott, his roommate and best friend. The Beltway Classic from suburban Baltimore coming up next week. It's been a presentation of ESPN, the worldwide leader in sports. Now for the entire crew, Randy Peterson, Norm Duke. It's Dave Ryan saying so long from Cleveland. The Foundation Golf Classic coming up next here on ESPN.